Roy from CyberConnect, are you with us? Yes. Hey, hey guys. Very nice. Good. I think we're pretty full here. Um, hopefully everyone enjoyed the ACDC intro. <laughs> um, cool. So, um, yeah, you got the heads of community on the line from Zeta Chain. This is Dallas JC speaking. And we also have the head of community from uh, CyberConnect, Roy, with us. Roy, how are you doing? Top of the morning to you. Yeah, pretty early in the morning, 7.30, but yeah, super excited about this. Nice. Yeah, because like pretty much I've been excited about this like partnership, you know, like for, for a week and um, we have this um, AMA coming. So yeah, thanks for having me. Of course. Yeah, 100%. I know this has been brewing in the background and we went live with the announcement on Friday and um, I'm excited to talk about this. And also, like, I want the Zeta Chainers on the call to learn about what your team is up to, if they're not already familiar. I think a lot of people know about Link3, the decentralized social network, but maybe not the um, protocol behind it, CyberConnect. So, yeah, we want to do project intros. We want to talk about current state of crypto from a macro standpoint and also share a little bit about how our projects are navigating this market. Some of you asked about that. And then of course, we'll talk about the partnership, what exactly Omnichain identity is and current state of things in both of our communities and ways to get involved. And we'll try to get through as many questions as we can. You guys submitted really excellent questions and I think that'll take us to the end. So we can just jump in here. Maybe Roy, tell us a bit about yourself and how you found CyberConnect. Yeah, so um, personally, um, I'm originally from China now in the United States. Uh, I've been here for like eight years, um, came to the States for, for school. I went to Cal um, for, for undergrad um, and then uh, like in, in in Berkeley, that's where uh, I met most uh, of the team. Like uh, Ryan, like our co-founder Wilson, like we both, uh, we all went to uh, Berkeley. And like after um, graduation, I, I went to grad school in Boston. And that's where, uh, that's when like the team, the, like the founding team started the, the previous company um, called DLive and uh, Lino back in 2017. And yeah, like last year around April, we started CyberConnect, um, doing Web3 social stuff. So yeah, um, like my, I personally, I don't come up with the, uh, I don't come with the technical background. So I'm working on mm -hmm. like roles, marketing, and community side um, at CyberConnect. For sure. Yeah. yeah. Um, um, what about you? Yeah. So. Um... I, we, we wear similar hats um, leading up the community for our projects. And, you know, I'm not a coder or developer either. And we could do deeper dives with um, technologists on our team around um, deeper technical things. But, um, yeah, for me, like I spent a lot of time building and consulting companies on technology around how people work like specifically helping them build flexible workforce models and be more agile in the market, especially because so many people, they want to freelance and they want to work independently. And it turns out in the old Web2 world, at least here in the US, regulation is really rigorous around like worker classification. And so it's really difficult to work for different projects. You've probably seen headlines over in California about Uber and, you know, are they 1099 drivers or are they full-time employees? So a lot of like legislation headaches that people deal with. And that was really what it attracted me to Web3, which is how frictionless everything is and how easy it is to organize and operate a company. Like things are open source you can leverage composability and 
push products out faster. And of course, the incentive alignment just makes so much more sense. And um, I think the big difference, the world that we're in, in Web3 and with decentralized protocols and projects, the value of all of this is in is in all the people on this call that, that are part of the network, the, the people that are building and will take ownership in the product and eventually make decisions that are best for the community and, and products versus value just being an intellectual property and people trying to patent things. So, um, yeah, I was fascinated by DAO's um, entry point for me was community manager. Um, I don't love the word manager. Like, I think it's very old world chain in command type Trust structure. Me, yeah. Like you get in this world and you realize it's more of like, how do you steward the ship and create the right incentive alignments to empower people to do what they're good at. And it's really cool touching so many different things like product roadmap, working with incredible partners like yourself on different use cases. So it's fun wearing a lot of different hats. So awesome. maybe, um, I was going to say, maybe let's give um, people an overview of CyberConnect, uh, Link3 product. What does the ecosystem look like? Uh, what, what's the big vision? Yeah, yeah, of course. Um, so CyberConnect is, uh, in short, is a decentralized social network protocol that helps like other Web3 application to bootstrap um, network effect and build meaningful social experience um, while empowering users to truly own and monetize their social data and content. So like ownership of, the, of your um, social connection and social content um, is what we do here. And Link3 is a Web3 social network um, of verifiable identity and a community hub uh, based on, built on top of and built by the, 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 the CyberConnect team. Um, where team can also, um, on, on Link3, like team also be able to build meaningful relationship with community members. Um, for example, the, um, like the latest uh, event calendar feature was the, uh, was a nice addition for enable like organizations to to hosting events on Link Three uh, while maintain a good um, um, like a relationship to their to their community. Mm -hmm. And you, and you guys blew up pretty fast, right? Like, how long has Link Three been in the market? Um, yeah, so like Link Three started uh, like serving as a Link Tree for Web Three organizations. We started at um, like five months ago, I believe, uh, around June. And then in July slash August, we introduced the personal uh, version of Link3 Profile. Um, and then I think two months ago, uh, end of September, we introduced the, the new um, event feature on Link3. Yeah, so it, like things are rolling out um, pretty fast. Amazing. Yeah, it's funny. For people listening, they ask, how did we get introduced? Well, it was actually someone in the Zeta Chain community connected us over Telegram with your team. And mm -hmm. you guys were selling us on replacing Linktree, which is the old Web2 Twitter bio link that all these projects use. And mm -hmm. it made so much sense. And now we're uh, running events and um local podcasts and stuff in different regions using this product. So, um, and then of course we got to this point where we're actually going to be building really cool stuff together. So. Yeah. Um, I like, like personally, I really think this, um, this is really interesting that we got connected uh, through the community, through like a, a contributor from community. I think that's, that's just beautiful, you know? Yep. hundred percent. So, um, people might be asking, like, what's the synergy here? And I think it's important to understand what Zeta Chain is doing and how interoperability plays in all of this. So just to level set, Zeta Chain's the first 
blockchain and omni-chain smart contract platform, and it's solving the big interoperability problem in a public decentralized way that hasn't really been done before. There's like really not a good reference point out there because what you find is that other layer ones or communication protocols, they try to bring as much of the ecosystem as they can into their own and they force developers to adopt different modules and stuff. And at the end of the day, there's they don't really have full connectivity with all chains like legacy chains, Bitcoin, for example. Um, so I think there's so much that we need to drive mainstream Web3 adoption and also cultural change like the FTX event, of course, does not help the space. Um, but I think interoperability is one of the most important things because Web3 has always been about a uh, free flow of information and the ability to interact with applications across the ecosystem and use different networks. And, and we don't really have omni-chain interoperability of data right now. So the, there are these solutions out there like cross-chain bridges, which people were asking about in the uh, uh, pre-questions. And um, a lot of the money that has been lost this year, close to $2 billion, much of that is due to these sort of patchy cross-chain bridge solutions that are not actually moving your assets from one chain and settling it on the destination chain, like the native value. Rather, they wrap and lock your tokens in a sort of parking lot and they issue you issue you an underlying representation of those tokens, like wrapped Ether or wrapped XYZ token. And so th there's a lot of user risk that is compounding in that parking lot. And of course, um, hackers are going to go and exploit those contracts. So um, th there's a real problem. And then I, I mentioned before, you have chains like Polygon and Cosmos and, and others that have, they've made advancements to promote interoperability within their ecosystems, but they're, the connectivity is still limited. And if, if you're a developer building an application, um, you have to adopt those tech standards and maintain it, and you're, you're not going to experience full compatibility with all the chains. So the whole thesis behind the Zeta Chain white paper and, and what we're building is, is, is achieving omni-chain interoperability of any data or value. And so all the apps that you guys use, like decentralized exchanges, NFT tech, you have a Web3 profile on CyberConnect, for example, these are all going to be omni-chain and span across all chains. And people are going to build apps that we can't even conceive yet, like the idea of having native Bitcoin liquidity on Ethereum, for example. And so uh, this is the, the next breakthrough, we think, um, in blockchain. Um, so a bit about Zeta Chain. Um, current state of crypto, maybe we can talk about the crazy stuff from last week. We, we had about 30 or 40 billion wiped out in value and the investigations are still pending. But uh, Roy, thoughts on the event, impact on crypto at large, what are you thinking? Yeah, um, so like about the whole like FCX saga, like the first thing um, that came up to me is like everything collapsed or like unfold so fast, like within four or five days, um, like everything unfolded just so quickly. And um, I think for the, for the entire industry, um, it's definitely not a good thing. Um, whether it's like from like, I mean, like having competitive, um, like having competitors in the 
in the CEX and the um, sector is definitely uh, important. And then um, also, I, I know like this this whole uh, FTX thing hurt a lot of uh, institution investors. Um, mm-hmm. I think that's gonna be pretty bad because I think last year uh, what we have seen uh, was a lot of big company, big uh, organizations, like institution money came into the um, to crypto, uh, whether to like Bitcoin or like building Web three, like a lot of money come in. But like was the um, like the FTX thing happening? Uh, I think that's gonna hurt um, institution money a little bit. Um, but from the like the from a like builder perspective in Web three, um, I don't think this gonna like affect us that much because like we're we're in this industry where like we're building this uh, Web three. Um, like for for like two years right now, but like I think we're we're in we're in this for at least like five ten years. You know, like um, I think like personally, I'm 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 pretty I'm pretty sure that um, to be able to 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 build like a truly decentralized and like um, like social with ownership to achieve that uh, is not done by like a year or like two years. You know. So yeah, we just gotta do what we do. Um, keep building, keep do um, things we we think is right, right? Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, what's uh, your what's your thought on this? Yeah, I I have a similar outlook. I mean, a cleansing is good in many ways. Um, I, I mean, a lot of people lost money, institutions, but we're talking as a team and. Of course, the media is not going to paint it this way, but the the smoke starts to settle and you realize that this actually strengthens the value prop for decentralization and transparency. Like last time I checked, DeFi is still working. Um, people still have their private wallet. Tokens are being moved around. I, I just think this continues to be about decentralization and transparency and when you start to understand that with blockchain everybody has an accurate copy of what happens and in theory it should be prohibitively expensive to manipulate that Um, that's just a better model compared to centralized finance where you have ftx or another business that is managing your funds they're executing services on your behalf instead of code on the blockchain. And, you know, we mentioned earlier the incentive alignment, like you actually have say in the decisions and future of the applications that you use. This is just a better model. And so I think the silver lining in all of it is that um, there'll be more transparency. And you're also seeing it right now with this emphasis on show me your proof of reserves and audit data and that's that's for both the centralized crypto exchanges but also DeFi. so that's it's all good but um yeah i don't know how long it'll last um and one thing i want to make clear from the zeta chain side is that we didn't have any exposure in ftx our treasury is invested in like conservative interest bearing accounts. We have a 10 year runway. And like you guys, Roy, we're just heads down, focused on building and battle testing this test net. And we wanna launch in Q1 with something that's really special, so. Nice, yeah, like pretty much same um, like statement from, from our end. Uh, pretty much no exposure. Um, just keep building, keep doing. Awesome. Yeah. So let's maybe get into the meat of this. On Friday, we announced the CyberConnect Zeta Chain partnership. Um, headline Zeta Chain and CyberConnect team up to build the first omni chain social network. So let's let's talk about it. Maybe like for newcomers on the call, you can talk about what Web3 identity is and maybe start 
with that and how that differs from uh, traditional platforms like Facebook and these other social networks? Yeah, um, so talking about Web3 identity, I think just start by thinking it's just like identity in real life, right? Like, who are you, right? So I think in Web3, um, identity is pretty much the same uh, in the way that it's um, it's like it's who you are, like by people you know, like the experience you had, the background you had, uh, maybe like your, uh, like the asset you own, it's all like expressing your um, personality and identity. Uh, but like Web3, talking about Web3 identity, what we want to do is a really composable um, way and like user really own their um, their identity. So like, for example, in the in the traditional like Web2 world, like we all know that all those information are just stored in the centralized database. And for example, Facebook, um, like they have done a lot of you know, like taking away other people's handle or like selling all your information to uh, to make themselves profitable. Um, a lot of those things, like so, like what we really want to do is to um, user would be able to own their own identity. Um, by saying identity, it's the um, the asset, the relationship, um, like the the social graph and stuff. Um, <clears throat> yeah. <clears throat> Sorry. Right. Yeah, um, Web3 identity is really powerful. Um, yeah, and another and thing I want to mention is um, like the, the, the Web3 identity cyber connection um, is also something that user can, uh, it's almost like a, like a backpack. You can just bring it and travel between different um, platform because um, like the, the identity is just your, like who are you, right? It, it shouldn't be limited to, uh, one specific platform, for example, like you, you are this person on on Link Three, uh, and of course you can bring all those um, like information or like your identity to to other platforms as well. Mm -hmm. Right, and and so this leads to multi-chain, and like, why was that functionality important to you? Why did you? want to start building on Zeta chain and, and partner with us. Yeah, so um, I think I'm like personally I'm a believer in the like multi-chain future. Um, I don't think like the, the industry will, will be dominated by like one or two blockchain. Um, well this is like my, my personal thought but like I think uh, it's just like in, in real life like we have different identity in different uh, like social settings or like um, like I'm a student and at school, I'm a, like this um, Web3 professional at CyberConnect and I might be this different person or like um, in, in different setting, maybe in like a, uh, when I'm due, when I'm in the bar, I'm probably like a total different person. So I, I think like in, 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 the, in the future, like in Web3, there will be like other um, like different scenarios and different settings uh, where maybe like those like are on different chains as well so i think um like the the, the whole thesis of this um zeta chain um cyber connect partnership i think is all about uh we envision the uh the future of um like multi chain but like we uh we can do something cool about like giving user the opportunity to to really own their identity in like um on different chains you know right yeah and it's like, you know, we talk about the promise of Web3 and we have all of these incredible new primitives, tokens, wallet accounts, all these sophisticated apps and stuff. But at the end of the day, um, you run into the interoperability problem. Everything's confined to one chain. And so, um, yeah, Web3 is a huge step in giving agency back to us where we can custody our own assets and um, social data in this in this case. But um, it's like, all right, I have an e ENS domain. How do I use that across different blockchains? How do I send payments uh, to friends on other networks? I think about games and uh, virtual reality experiences emerging around that and all the um, 
NFT assets that you can use to um, that that will power those worlds. And it's like, how do you uh, join your friends on different chains, get exposure to their marketplaces? And so, yeah, the whole thing behind Zeta Chain CyberConnect and what we're going to be building and um, the product calls start this week. Um, it's about enabling you to bring your social profile and all of your history and all the interactions on um, other chains that, that you develop over time. Uh, it's being able to bring that to applications across all of crypto. Um, and, you know, right now everything's fragmented. There's not really a good way to do this. Like maybe there's a cross-chain bridge where you can send an asset or payment to a friend, but it's distracting to developers to have to um, maintain that sort of stuff. And it's not as safe as it could be for users. Um, so that's sort of the omni-chain identity vision. Um, Roy, I do want to talk about... Um, omni-chain smart contracts because like you might be asking how do you actually make this a reality and um, what CyberConnect is going to be building using Zeta Chain are these things called omni-chain smart contracts. There's a lot of alpha that's going to come out this week and you're going to be able to read up on um, our developer docs and actually test this in, in Zeta Labs but like high level omni chain smart contracts allow developers to build their apps in one place on Zeta Chain, and then they will work across all important connected chains by default. And so we have this new primitive coming out, for example, called Z EVM, Zeta EVM. And this module developers can use to create and deploy an EVM compatible omni-chain smart contract. And that smart contract can access and manage native assets, data, liquidity on any chain from a single place. And so you think about some of the new social features that will come out on Link3 and other stuff that we're going to build together. Um, that's all going to be powered by this, this new primitive omni-chain smart contracts. So in terms of next steps, uh, Roy, how's your team thinking about roadmap? Like a lot of people on the call were asking, what kind of features can we expect? Um, there's some alpha about pass holders being able to claim omni-chain profiles in the future. Maybe talk a little bit about that. Yeah, um, so like in terms of roadmap, um, to be very honest, like our team, um, like kind of like we, we, we tend to change our plan and, like, and roadmap like pretty, pretty frequently is not because mm -hmm. like, um, like we we're not like doing like the, the thing we, we envisioned in the very beginning, like the vision was still the same. Um, but like in terms of uh, specific features, like product to develop. Uh, or like the the focus in the specific time period, um, like we are we are a pretty flexible team. Uh, we have a lot of stuff to to test, uh, and we want to um, just just like fast turnover, you know, like do this and see like how the market or like how our community is reacting to this. If it doesn't work, we just change to something else. Um, but like. And I, 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 I do um, I, I do agree that um, there's a lot of like exciting um, stuff coming up. Um, but I would say like right now maybe the, like the, the best way to, to participate to like support us um, is to to like by using link three right to attend some events you're interested like <clears throat> once again like you um, uh, like you don't have to like go to every event on link three. Uh, we have like about almost like 200 event um, last week. So it's, it's impossible to, to like attend all the events, but um, do explore some events. Um, like we have events um, from like a lot of different, um, like really different projects um, who's like maybe like some of them are on the infra side. Some of them are like NFT project, like DeFi, gaming, um, like everything. 
Um, and in the like, coming up, uh, we're gonna do a lot of um, whitelisting and um, giveaway on the on the link three personal profile as well. Um, so definitely stay tuned to that. Um, and for the for the um, like the the omni chain profile, um, I would say um, I could I probably couldn't share like more information right now, but um, definitely stay tuned. Uh, we have good things for you guys. Yeah, yeah, and our um, smart contracts team is getting together with you guys this week, so we'll we'll talk about what we have planned more. Yeah. Um, what someone was asking in the questions, like, what's the mutual benefit here? I think you know we touched on the intersection of Web three identity and interoperability, um, but any any other thoughts to add? Just um, in terms of value we're adding to CyberConnect, and I can share a few thoughts the other yeah, way around. Yeah, you can, you can go ahead first. Yeah, so um, at ZetaChain, we're, we're a layer one blockchain, and you know we can't build everything. We, we have plans to create a really robust ecosystem, and um, at the same time, though, we need to bootstrap this thing and we need to showcase examples of these omni-chain applications. You've seen the native cross-chain value swap in Zeta Labs and we'll continue to build stuff on testnet and um, for mainnet. But what we really want to do is open source these smart contracts and UIs to the dev community so that they can build more stuff and then that drives adoption on all of these new products and um, that's that's the formula to success. Identity is one of those core use cases in our opinion along with NFTs and DeFi and they overlap in, in so many ways. When we were looking at the market, uh, CyberConnect they're they're the leading decentralized social network in our estimation. You, you guys have like millions of users on Link3 and um, you're building a whole ecosystem around the protocol. And so, um, yeah, we, we wanted to bring them on as a launch partner. And we think that we can affect the space in a pretty meaningful way and inspire new use cases around Web3 identity. So this is just the start, but um, we think with CyberConnect that we can showcase some pretty cool stuff and um, our values aligned around that, so. Yeah, um, so I think like, one thing we definitely, um, let's see, uh, and cyber as um come into this is um actually like when we started the protocol last year um like the first thing we want to make sure uh, is blockchain agnostic uh, back then like we we used this term right so um like we don't want our social graph or like our application to be um to be on like uh, maybe like just one chain you know so like um, I think like with the with the collaboration or like uh, partnership with that uh, Zeta Chain, um, it's a good way to like start really building like omni-chain social network uh, where user can maintain um, their like ho a holistic um, decentralized identity across chain and platforms. Like we both um, uh, like explain this a little bit more. Um, so like core to this vision, I think. Um, like it, it also uh, fulfills our original like blockchain agnostic design, um, like all the user profiles, all the social connections, um, and like user generated content uh, will be like uh, interoperable across all blockchains um, with Zeta Chain. So I think that's uh, what really matters here. Yep, there it is. So you touched on a bit about how to get involved in CyberConnect and, and building a profile on Link3, joining events. Uh, I'm curious, the uh, community manager in me, and I know we don't like that word, <laughs> um, How? what's the structure of your community like? How the heck do you support tens of thousands of people on the web? 
Is there uh, any special sauce to how you do it and, and how you've been successful? Yeah, um, I don't like I don't want to use the term like, you know, successful. But yeah, like I've been like we've been doing our community um, like over, I think, almost. Uh, yeah, almost a year. Uh, I think it is a year right now. Um, so like what we really focused on was to um, give anyone um, a, a chance to, to contribute. Right. Uh, by saying contribute, um, I, I think there's a lot of things a user can do. I also mentioned like now um, to participate, like maybe the best ways is to um, to get get your hands on Link Three, um, attend some events. But like in our community, uh, we have around I believe eighty uh, contributors, and a lot of them and, and a lot of those people like I've been knowing them for for like a year. Um, they were there since the very beginning of our um, community uh, when we were just like five hundred people Discord server um like they were helping um the community you know po um, posting announcement uh organizing you know like quiz daily activities um and back then there was still the the bull market everyone was so busy you know exploring new projects um getting hands onto like new nfc drops um but, like i think what keeps people um like stay with stay with us stay with CyberConnect. Uh, was la uh, was the the fact that uh, we just uh, like a lot of things have changed to be honest. Uh, like we started out um, doing protocol only. Like we didn't want to do any um, like um, DApps specific stuff. Uh, like we want to work with other like developers to to build application. Uh, but like then we introduced Link Three. Uh, we kind of did our in house. Um, DAP built on top of the like the protocol, but I think like the the the, the reason people are staying with us is we really ex, um, respect all the contributor and all the people who who support us. Um, I think it's just like recognize people's work, you know, like people um, doing a lot of great thing, amazing things in our community, and um, uh, most of them are not paid. It's not a paid job. Like we don't pay them like by like hourly wage, you know, uh, but like mm -hmm. I think it's just like recognizing people's work and like building toward the um, like the the Web three like we, we like everyone envisioned. Yeah, yeah, appreciation is is important, mm -hmm. um, and it's funny. I remember seven eight months ago when our Discord was a ghost town and. You, you talk to people and their avatars and they live across the world and, you know, talk about identity and reputation building. Like, um, it's been pretty cool. I think for us, like, everything revolved around the tech. You know, for a while it was just the white paper in February and we were talking a lot about a really cool omni-chain future. Um, but it was only until August when we actually released Zeta Labs and showed people that, hey, you can actually transfer tokens from one chain to any other chain without wrapping, and it settles immediately. And for people like to feel that, that's um, I, I attribute that to the growth. And then, you know, multiple things can be true at once. You have Aptos and these other um, L1s and lots of hype around testnet and, you know, we'll, we'll take the growth too. And with that comes bad actors and spammers. But we have, uh, we have 15 ambassadors around the world, 50 uh, what we call VIP contributors, a couple hundred uh, contributors after that that are joining through Crew 3, this social app that we just launched today. And like, um, you know, one person can't manage all of this. And people are really committed and passionate about this stuff. And they're helping monitor the health of the community. And um, we, we've done a lot around security and threat detection and stuff. So I guess, you know, bottom line is um, so many people have been 
super helpful and helped us get to where we are right now. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah. Like it, it's amazing that you guys have that many um, contributors. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. Yeah. So that's sort of the end of the topics here. We can get to some of the questions that people submitted with the remaining time. Uh, we talked about the story of how we got introduced our teams. Um, also, I think our founders and some executives know each other between our projects just from previous crypto things. Um, this is a good question. So how will Web3 verification work if someone wants to be hidden in the era of decentralization? Yeah, so um, I think we, we, we get to ask this a lot. Um, like, what if I want to just um, hide my identity or... Um, cause I, I think the, the reason was, um, in the, in the very, like the first version of our social graph or like the demo we built on, uh, both Ethereum and Solana, um, all the information are pretty much like public available, just like who you followed on, uh, on Twitter, right? It doesn't matter. It's like, oh, I don't want people to know I follow this person. Uh, it doesn't really make sense. Um, but like, and I think in the future, uh, especially on on link three, um, maybe you you attend an event, but you don't want people to know. Um, I don't know if that's the that's gonna be uh, like a possible like use case, but like right now, uh, it's pretty clear that like attending those Discord and um, and and Twitter um, Twitter Space event is is it's pretty much um, all public. So um, so like right now we don't have this issue uh, like a lot. But like, and definitely in the future, I think we tend to work with um, like some other project or some other protocols um, that's focusing on the the privacy layer or like the privacy solution uh, in the future. So mm -hmm. yeah, I, I think the like the beauty of Web three of the those like uh, interoperability is um, in Web two, like companies try to do everything. Um, you know, like uh, like Facebook tries to do everything. Uh, Google tries to do everything. Uh, you know, in China, like we have WeChat. It's pretty much a humongous app that you can buy stuff, you can pay for your bill, you can get Uber. You know, you can you can chat with people, you can send money. Like you just want to do like everything within like one place within one application. But I think um, on Web three, uh, what people really believe is um, like we, we just try to do um, what we think the most important thing and other other stuff um, like you just work with other other people with other amazing builders. I think that's the sphere and that's um, how we envision us solving this um, all like privacy um, stuff. Yeah. But like at this moment, um, all like all we ask is um, like your Twitter account, maybe your Discord. Um, I think uh, all those, like, we don't have that that many um, problems with privacy-related stuff. You know? Yeah. Yeah, I'm sure there's partners out there for encryption. And also, it's up to the user, like, you know, do you want to disclose personal identifiable information? Um, you can just hide behind an avatar still and just use your wallet to build reputation. I, I think there's something to be said, though, about tying your reputation to what you say and bearing the consequences of that uh, versus, mm -hmm. you know, being these demon trolls on Twitter that are pathological and stuff. Like, you know, then what you say carries more weight if you bear the consequences. I don't know if you have thoughts. Uh, what was the what was the question again? Sorry. Um, so you know, coming out with your real life identity and uh, tying that to your Web three identity, I, I think um, people might respect what you have to say more if you're not hiding behind the curtain. Um, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think that. Yeah, I'll, yeah, that that that's also like one of the um, like important things to. 
to, to think about um, like the credibility of your work, of your like endorsement or like engagement, you know, like every, every action matters on link three. It's not just like um, you like behind the curtain, you know? Yeah. In line with that, we've gotten questions. Uh, you guys maybe are a little bit more public, but um, you know, people are asking why is Zeta chain team anonymous? Where's the investor and funding information and all that stuff. So we're not so anonymous. Like we've done video podcasts. We've had our head of product on um, interviews, our CTO, engineers and stuff. Some investor stuff is also public, but a lot of stuff is, is going to be released in the next couple months and stuff. Uh, just to like assure people's credibility, uh, Zeta Chain team has a lot of experience in crypto. Like one of our leads was behind the basic attention token, and he also led all of consumer product at Coinbase for a while. And our our lead engineer helped create ThorChain, and that was a, a big inspiration for the Zeta Chain architecture. We, we've just really been heads down focused on uh, testnet and trying to battle test that and build stuff with partners like CyberConnect so that we can deliver something really special in Q1. But um, again, more stuff will, will come out, but just wanted to address that head on. Someone else asks uh, about Twitter verification. Um, I think you spoke a bit about this, Roy. Um, they're also asking, will Link3 profiles integrate with Zeta Chain? That, that's a that's a good idea. What do you think? Yeah, um, that's very good. Um, I, I guess it depends on um, like the conversation between our uh, product team and the like the engineer team um, with Zeta Chain. Um, like personally, I think Link Three, um, like we 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 want to work with other um, like protocols or like L ones as well. Um, is that um, like right now? I like, feel like because um, like I know like I we also get a lot of people like complaining about uh, like paying gas fee for for maintaining less is uh, is a little bit high right now and a lot of um, issues right now. Uh, people also want to. Um, use link link three in other um, other chains as well, um, but like it, it at the very end, it all depends on like the conversation with the engineer and product team. Yeah, right. Like personally, I I, I really uh, I'm really looking forward to to any um, expansion or like um, collaboration with with others. Yeah, for sure. Had we started talking earlier in the year, I think we could have integrated into our test net instead of using the Twitter verification. And then um, we that would have helped defend against bots and spam. Right now we're using Twitter. Um, but uh, yeah, th I think this is a fantastic idea for mainnet. It's just, we have other important features and stuff to build uh, together. And you guys have a pretty robust roadmap yourself, so. All right. Any questions for me, Roy? Um, I don't know. Maybe I just want to ask, um, like how, like any tips you can give to people. Um, like I know, like you, like you, you guys work uh, like super hard. You know, um, mm -hmm. like do you, do you like during the weekend? Do you just like unplug yourself, or like, or like what do you do outside of work? I'm just curious because. I think a lot of people in Web3 um, like have this problem of, of burning out, you know? Um, yeah. Because like our work is, and like, like we work people all over the world. Uh, we work people from Asia, from different time zone. Uh, sometimes I have to take calls uh, like 11 p.m., like 1 a.m. in the in the morning, and then waking up like 7:30, um, the like the second day to to hop on an AMA. Um, to talk to, you know, talk to our communities, talk to other people, like, how do you cope with everything? Yeah, um, and we're 
totally distributed from California to uh, Taipei and everything in between. Um, it's it's hard. I think it's it's good to talk to people not about crypto. Like I'm super into music, and we want to do a Zeta Beats contest as our next thing. So you can be creative and make music if you're into that. And um, creativity and content gen is such a big part of the future of crypto. But um, I think, uh, yes, it's it's really hard. You got to take a break from screens. Um, I wish I could take that advice, but it's like 24 seven, but you got to surround yourself with people that you trust. Like I'm really grateful to have the 15 ambassadors in discord and the VIP contributors and people that we're um, bringing on board that have shared values and what we're trying to do. And I trust that they can look over things. And so that's, that's really important, but this whole digital world is not a natural thing. And the Twitter spaces right now is like really powerful. There's thousands of you that are listening. It's so cool, but um, moderation, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I totally agree. Like working with people you like, uh, people you trust, um, sometimes it helps. Yeah. Yeah, like personally for me, um, it just, um, I, I work six days a week. So on Saturday, um, I pretty much like unplug from everything, like, you know, like no Discord, no Telegram, um, just me. Um, and I like recently in the recent one that I, I was picking up um, playing golf again. So nice. yeah, playing a lot of golf, you know, out there in the in the nature um, with some buddies, you know, uh, I think that really helps. Yeah, it's just like recharge every week. Uh, and then, um, yeah, like with the with the market with everything, I think um, there's like there has been some bad news, but um, I mean the I mean the like the most important thing is we're still here talking about omnichain, talking about Web three social. Um, I think the the future is it's 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 there. Yeah, tech doesn't change. There's just a cleansing that will continue yeah. to happen. Um, and if people in our communities listening have ideas for ways to, um, you know, make things more fun, we, we do these games in Discord. Vedant, uh, one of our ambassadors, leads those. And there's some fun Discord bots. I can share them with you, Roy. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, if you guys have ideas, community spotlight channel, or um, if you're a contributor, share in one of those channels and we'll, we'll do something. Maybe one day we can do a, a golf event in, in region and invite the community. Yeah, yeah. I think, um, yeah, it's, it's a good idea that we should definitely, um, like people should definitely stay tuned because we're, we're definitely going to um, do a lot of um, collaboration and joint activities um, in the, on, on the community level, you know, uh, between our uh, us communities um yeah amazing and you need a link link three profile to play golf and we're going to do a whole game of <laughs> experience out of it yeah um and lastly i just want to uh, make sure uh, everyone is clear that this event it's um also on link three and we're also um issuing a west token the web three status token for this event so um, I like my apologies is like I've been saying this over and over. Um, the Twitter API is sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, we have a lot of people uh, participating um, today, joining us today. Um, really thank you guys uh, for your support. And currently the the minimum stay time requirement is 20 minutes and but like our um, our, our product team is working on it. Uh, we're gonna make it shorter. So like more people would be um, qualified um, for this, um, for for getting this badge. Um, so uh, all you have to do is to check out Zeta Chang's um, tweet, head head over to the to the event page on Link Three, and at the very bottom of the page, 
um, there's a West Oakland claiming page. Um, and like all you have to do is pretty much connect your wallet and verify your Twitter. Uh, and that's it. Thanks, Roy. And apologies on behalf of ZetaChain. We have a history of breaking all of these apps, Discord, <laughs> Build, Crew 3. We, we've crashed them all. Um, uh, there's a Discord problem actually with Galaxy for those listening. You're going to get your roles back soon. Um, but yeah, thank you everyone for joining. And Roy, thank you for taking the time and super excited to collab with your team and build some stuff yeah yeah thank you so much awesome i'm gonna cue the music and uh everyone have a great morning afternoon and evening thanks thank you